guys, welcome back. Mama Dr. Jones, OBGYN, and mom to four. Today we're going through a video called I Went Through Early Menopause at Age 28 from the YouTube channel As Is. You guys have been sending this to me, asking me what I thought about it. I haven't watched it yet, but we're gonna go through it today. If you haven't checked out our merch, you don't get to be offended by science. You can check it out at Teespring at the link below. I went through early menopause when I was just 28. Any menopause that starts before the age of 40. The average age of menopause in the United States is 52. Early menopause is the kind of known term for this, but we call it primary ovarian insufficiency. It used to be called premature ovarian failure. This is relatively rare, and they say about 5% of people. I don't know if that number is accurate or not, but it is really unusual. I've seen it clinically a handful of times, and I also have a very dear friend who had this happen to her when we were in college. And it was my back, my legs, my arms, and I had really intense migraines with aura. Maybe a year or so after college, it went back to being light, and just whenever it wanted to be. Right now she's describing what was her periods that were kind of heavy and kind of painful. And then after she got out of college, they became less and less frequent and lighter and lighter. And eventually they went away completely. I was never on any sort of birth control. So that wasn't messing with my hormones. It was just my body being crazy. The last time I remember having a period was when I was 28, February of that year, I was 28 years old. Obviously it's super important to keep track of your period and if you stop having periods, absolutely a reason to talk to your doctor or your advanced practice provider. I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like just sweating buckets. I'm like, this is weird. The next night, the same thing happened. I was like, I'll just sleep with less blankets on. I was like, do I have a fever? Then it happened again and it happened for four to six months. This is a common complaint in menopause due to the low estrogen levels that happen after your ovaries stop producing as many hormones. I asked my mom, I was like, mom, maybe I'm going through early menopause. And she's like, no, because she didn't. And none of the women in my family did, to my knowledge. Most common indicator of when you will go through menopause is when your mother went through menopause. She was saying, I told my mom, maybe that's what it was, but she said, no, I didn't go through menopause early, you're okay. That is a really common thing that we ask. Of course, if she came into my clinic telling me this, there's a whole bunch of workup that I would do, but I'm interested to see if she was seen by a doctor and what they told her as well. I had gone to an OBGYN and I was telling her I was like some weird things have been happening. She made a statement and she said she had to use the smallest speculum because one of the things that happens during and after menopause is tightening. What happens is that those low estrogen levels that I was talking about, which can contribute to hot flashes, they also contribute to what we call vaginal atrophy. Estrogen gives the skin its elasticity and allows it to be a little bit more hydrated with some of the oils and things that it produces. After menopause, a lot of people experience thinning of the skin on the vulva and vaginal vault, and that can cause irritation and dryness, pain with intercourse, increased feeling of friction with intercourse. So I think that's what she's describing right now. But she was really dismissive. She wouldn't take me seriously. She didn't ask me any follow-up questions. She didn't want to hear any of my questions. I was like, okay, well, this is not helpful. So I kind of just let it go. I find it really odd that they didn't do any lab work or anything at this point. So if a patient came to me and said, I haven't had a period in a year and I'm having these symptoms, I would check their thyroid. I would check their FSH and estradiol, which looks for some hormones that could indicate if they have gone into menopause. If the estradiol is very low, and the FSH is very high, that would be indicative of primary ovarian insufficiency or premature menopause. What's happening, FSH is the hormone that recruits follicles in the ovary. So after you are menopausal and those follicles aren't there anymore, the FSH gets higher and higher because it's working harder and harder to tell the ovary to make an ovulation site for the month. It can't do that because you've already gone through menopause, there's no ovulation site to recruit, that process just stops. You also wanna rule out a few other things anytime somebody comes in with what we call secondary amenorrhea or absence of periods for over six months when you previously were having periods. Common causes of that that are not primary ovarian insufficiency would be thyroid dysfunction, PCOS, something called hyperprolactinemia, a few other things which would kind of depend on the patient's history 
Sometimes if somebody has a really significant weight loss, they can get what we call hypo-hypo amenorrhea where your hormone levels are just super low because you're malnourished essentially. You can also get it from really athletic changes as well. And so then I went and did a ton more research and I was like, oh no, no, I definitely have experienced menopause and it's been over a year. If you have gone more than 12 months without a period, then you've had menopause. And I went to a couple of other doctors. If you've gone over 12 months without a period and we've ruled out other causes and your lab work is consistent with primary ovarian insufficiency, then you've gone through menopause. If you're at a typical age for menopause and you go more than 12 months without a period and there's no other symptoms or anything going on that we're worried about, then we use just the 12 months without a period to signify menopause. But you can go over 12 months without a period and it not be primary ovarian insufficiency when you're younger. It's never normal in the absence of things like pregnancy and then breastfeeding or hormonal birth control that keeps you from having a period or IUDs or whatever, but in the absence of those things, Going that long without a period is never normal, but it's not always menopause. Hey, this is what's going on with me. I have a history of autoimmune disease with myself and my family. Maybe, can we look into this? Can we talk? Primary ovarian insufficiency can be associated with some genetic conditions like being a carrier for fragile X. It can also be associated with mosaic Turner syndrome. They may go through a period of time where they have normal periods and then they have early loss of periods. And in those patients, you need further workup, some evaluation of the heart, things like that. So it is super important not only to make sure that this is primary ovarian insufficiency, but to make sure that it's not associated with some of those other conditions that also need treatment. And some of those can be kind of silent conditions. I'm like, no, no, no just dismissing me and not taking me seriously. They wouldn't run any tests. I really think that's because of the bias against black women in the medical community because it happened three different times. That's horrible. I don't understand why nobody would have done lab work if she brought it up with three different doctors and she had gone that long without a period. What? I don't... <sighs> Sometimes I watch these things and I think, how are there people out there practicing medicine like this? I don't understand. It continues to be horrible to me that people feel like they aren't listened to for any reason, but especially if she feels like this is related to her skin color. We know that systemic racism and implicit bias still are at play in the way a lot of people are treated in the medical community. And the only way we can fight that is to be aware that it happens. And the only way we can know that it happens other than research studies, which have unequivocally shown that it is still something that goes on, is to listen to stories like this and to take that to heart as people in the medical profession and make sure that we are the change and not the problem. And I still haven't been formally diagnosed, but I know this is what's happened to me and it has been a little bit crazy. I wish I knew how to reach out to her and tell her a good doctor to see in her area because she does need to get seen and have the appropriate workup. Even if she's 100% sure this is what that is, it's not the only thing that can make your periods go away. When I tried to talk to medical professionals and they didn't believe me or want to talk to me, that was frustrating because I'm like, I know I'm not crazy and I'm not making this up. These things are happening. On the plus side, I really, 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 really do not want kids. So a lot of people would be upset about that. I know a lot of Women who, if they have some sort of um, reproductive health issue, they would have to go through in vitro and all those things, so I won't worry about that. It's lucky for her that she wanted to remain child-free. However, having seen this clinically several times, and in my good friend, a lot of times it's not the case, and this is an absolutely devastating diagnosis for a lot of people when it happens. I wanna again reiterate, it's extremely rare and it's not the only cause of your periods to go away. So if you're watching this and you haven't been having periods, get in with your doctor. If your doctor treats you like that, find a new one. That's unacceptable. I feel just, yeah, we already went through that. Unacceptable. A lot of times you can't do IVF after this because the reason the person has gone through menopause is because there are no eggs left. Maybe in some cases could carry a pregnancy but almost always that would require an egg or embryo donation. Sometimes the changes associated with menopause would even make carrying a pregnancy difficult. Although most of the time you could carry a pregnancy, you just wouldn't be able to use your own eggs. So some women choose to do hormone replacement therapy while or after they've gone through menopause. 
because when the estrogen leaves your body, you are at higher risk for osteoporosis and heart disease and stroke. Super, super important that if someone goes through menopause much earlier than they should have, we start them on hormone replacement therapy with estrogen and progesterone. And the reason for that is exactly what she just mentioned, the risk of osteoporosis. You need estrogen to keep your bones healthy. If you have menopause at 25 or 26 and you don't have any estrogen the rest of your life, the chances that you will end up having osteoporosis are very, very high. That can be a devastating disease as well. Anytime someone is diagnosed with primary ovarian insufficiency, they should be started on estrogen and progesterone, and that should be continued until they are the average age of menopause over age 50. I haven't done it because no doctors have entertained me about what's going on with me. It's okay because there's a lot of controversy about it. Ah, no, this isn't controversial. Estrogen replacement in someone who goes through menopause extremely early is not controversial. You would have had those hormones if you hadn't gone through it and you need them, your body needs them. There's no controversy about this. If someone thinks there's controversy about it, it's not someone trained in this field. So I did a lot of research. So I've taken black cohosh instead for the past few years. It's the root of this herb. It just kind of works with your body and you're less at risk for those things. And I've just been really vigilant about my health. I've been drinking water and exercising and just being kind of mindful and trying not to do as many things as I used to do, or at least like be careful of my knees because I love to run and stuff like that. Black cohosh, they help you feel better. And some people, they feel like hot flashes and things like that are helped a little bit by that. But it is by no means an effective estrogen replacement to protect somebody's heart and especially to protect their bones. We got to figure out how to get you in with someone good. Email me. I will find you someone good, girl. You have got to talk to someone who is going to take you seriously. I am so sorry on behalf of my profession that someone has not taken you seriously, but we got to get you in. We got to protect those bones, especially because you're a runner. I don't want kids for a plethora of reasons, but now there's the added fact of I like I can't have them. And it's an interesting thing to kind of navigate when I'm meeting someone new. Like, when do I say that? Oh, by the way, um can't have any children. And they're like, did you think we were gonna have some? Like, no, I no, I didn't, but I'm just letting you know. Yeah, I've never thought about that at length, but it must be really hard to decide when and how to bring that up in conversation because too early, and like she said, people act like you were assuming that that person wanted to have a baby with you and too late and you feel like you've hidden something important from someone who now might be invested in that idea. It makes me glad I've watched this because it's something that I haven't thought about when counseling patients and will hopefully make me a little more sensitive to that in the future. But the plus side is I don't have a period anymore. So I don't have to spend like tons of money every month on those products. Everything is bearable if you just like do your research and have positive people around you, so. But also no periods. I was just talking to a patient yesterday about the fact that that's a nice perk of menopause, although this patient was of the normal age that someone goes through menopause. If she were my patient, I would want her to get some lab work done, and then I'd want her to come back in so we can go over risks and benefits of hormone replacement, all of that. To Lydia, I'm sorry that you've been dismissed. Please, please find a doctor or advanced practice provider who you trust, who will take good care of you. If you can't reach out to me, tell me where you live. I will find you someone personally. I hope you learned something today, guys. Thank you for being here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out. And if you wanna support the channel, subscribe or check out the merch. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind, and I will see you next time.